Professional wrestling in the United Kingdom spans over a hundred years, but became popular when the television show World of Sport was launched in the mid-1960s. The success and appeal of World of Sport television show made household names out of many wrestlers. The sport remained a mainstay of British culture from the late 60s until World of Sport's cancellation in 1985. Wrestling attendance in Plymouth also declined and live shows ceased to run. Popularity arose once more in the late 90s when Merseyside All-Star Wrestling Promotions started performing to a sold-out crowd in Plymouth's Guild Hall. However, in 2004, All-Star Promotions cancelled all future Plymouth shows due to rising costs and the lack of support from local authorities. Five years later, PWA, Plymouth Wrestling Alliance founder John Harding would emerge as the new curator for live wrestling shows in Plymouth. This is his story. Well, my name is John Harding, I'm 24 and I started uh, in the wrestling business when I was 15. I go under the alias The Rocker, uh, which has been taken from Marginé and I do have permission to use it. It first started off really um, 14 actually to be honest. I went outside the Guild Hall um, with my brother Simon for about seven hours waiting to get a nice front seat to the uh, nice ringside seat for the show. Uh, a few hours later, I say seven hours later, the rink crew did arrive and Another pair of brothers, Dave and Darren. One, one of them goes under the name of Rick Masters. The other went on as uh, an imitation gimmick of Sergeant Slaughter. They asked us to help with the ring, and so my brother jumped at the chance to help them out. And then when the ring was constructed, they asked us if we wanted to learn how to wrestle. Here, this is where I first learned how to do headlocks and to take my first bump. My brother <laughs> was a lot better with bumps than I was at the start, but. Now I've had more experience than he has. I tend to bump a lot more insane than he does. Um, it's, it's been a bumpy ride for me with, with regards to wrestling, but it's since my first bump, every match, every show I've been on, it's been an adrenaline ride ever since. Well, my first professional wrestling bout was in the Bournemouth International Centre. I was, I think I was 17, I think. I can't remember that far back now and it was against the gentleman named Ed Ferris. Um, as professionally wrestling is a predetermined sport, um, I got the win over, over Ed Ferris being the more promising trainee. Uh, <laughs> it's for, having the first reaction from the crowd as you step out and you start cheering and getting the crowd clapping it once they respond to you and know who you are. Um, the rest from that alone is better than anything on TV, like you've seen on TV. Yeah, if you come seeing things live, it's ten times, possibly a hundred times better than seeing them through the TV set. Unfortunately, back then, when I was working for the Wrestling Alliance, which is the promotion I had my first match with, I went under the name as Ivor Biggin. Not the best name I liked, but it's actually, to be honest, it's the most hated. With pro wrestling, um, it's a lot for a character. It's a lot easier to go out to an audience, say two words, and the crowd immediately hates you. With a face, you go out and it's, you have to jump around, clap your hands, wave over, wave over about, jump out, kid, tag kids' hands. Um, there's a lot more energy to be used, but if you waste, if you use that energy, yeah, you'd feel you'd be back. By the time you get to the wing, you're half knackered. Thank you all for turning up to be the way you can. Well, it first started off um, to create my create my own promotion, Plymouth Wrestling Lines, or uh, associated where we all went to go, PWA UK. Um, it started off sitting in Dominos on Monday playing, um, just waiting for a pizza when I was sat with Steeny. Um, just, <laughs> just waiting, seriously, just waiting, just talking about how we could do or how much can happen, and just, just dreaming about having the first show, our own title belts. And, uh, and just generally having this kick-ass promotion in Guildhall like, uh, so many times a year and 
go around the streets of Plymouth for your time about getting a lot of um, fame amongst us. Um, that's really what kicked off the idea, but it wasn't until a few years later until I said to myself, well, I'm going to have to have a show here one day. There's been no wrestling in Plymouth, Guildhall, or anywhere in Plymouth for four or five years. And to be honest, I miss wrestling, and I'm, if I miss wrestling, I'm sure kids, adults alone in the area are going to miss res uh, missing wrestling. So I decided to sit down with my brother, sit down with my dad, David, uh, and basically put money together and try and get this try and get a show. But, um, Simon coughed up a bit of money. My dad took out an extra loan and gave me 800 quid towards it. I put 400 quid into it from the wages I had. Um, and at this point I've got two kids, so it's very difficult to put this money together. I had to sacrifice a few things, but I poured this money in and signed the check over to the Guildhall staff and basically it was a roller coaster ride from there. Advertising, programs, merchandise, getting a ring. I didn't know it was going to be such hard work, but every bit of hard work I did, I knew it was going to pay off. From the perform, perform, uh, PPL, the phonographic performance license, to the public liability shows for training, for doing my own training school, as well as here, thankfully I'm using the council, so I've got a bit of leeway. Um, from booking the wrestlers, booking the ring, trying to get merchandise together, designing, sitting down in front of my laptop and designing these programs to get this show off, to, get to make the show fantastic. Coming up with Wrestling Super Show, well, technically it was because it's the first in five years type thing. And I think of a main event and I thought, why don't we just have the whole of the UK versus the Plymouth? Get the best of the British versus the best of the Promotions. And thankfully I had a few Promotions who were pros to able to, you know, if three or four years ago, if I decided to do a show, I wouldn't have Scott Jones. Um, I wouldn't know where Caleb Kane is or how to get over to Caleb Kane. Um, my brother would probably still be here instead of being away at sea. But, but then I had a generation of wrestlers who, who aren't expensive and they were willing to travel. Um, I planned for Tim Burns, um, Nexus, who was going to be known as CJ King, Carl Atlas, or to be part of this big eight man tag. Unfortunately, due to pull outs and my son being, my brother being away, um, and a few medical emergencies and whatnot. Unfortunately, he went down to where it was in April. But from start to finish that show, to be able to, when I came out uh, to do the promo with Johnny Sicko, and seen everybody there, the first few steps I took and saw everybody, I was the part. I nearly cried on the way there, on the way to the ring. Um, and by the time I half, like literally two, two seconds of the promo, I burst out in tears. Because one, my brother wasn't there to see what, what his money had made. My dad wasn't there to see what he's done. But I was there to witness all of those people, near 500 people in that hall, with hardly an empty seat in the house. The Lord Mayor and Lady Mayoress at the time, Brian Vincent and Paul and Murphy, they were both there at the balcony, um, supporting us. And it's nice to have the, the uh, mayor at the time to support him with wrestling. And I burst out in tears. Seeing everybody there, knowing from sat in dominoes, waiting for pizza, discussing about the show, to having it in, stood in the middle of the ring in my nice lovely suit, the mic in my hand, seeing everybody there supporting, supporting, supporting me with it, it, I burst out in tears. I couldn't stop crying. I had to hold, try and hold back as much as I can, and, and all that money is worth it. To be able to, and then to be able to gain enough money, enough profit to put on another show here today. Um, for Halloween payback, it's hopefully it should top what April was, and then whatever comes from this, um, whatever regardless of how much money I make or how much I don't make, I'm going to do one in February. And then, regardless of what my red February does, I'm going to do a second anniversary, I'm going to have to do one in April. A uh, gentleman, Alex Shane, he says, If you've got enough money to throw at it, it will work, and I'm willing to throw anything to make. Put the Fresh Alliance work. You ready to